Welcome to the Microsoft Partner Network podcast. Every week we bring in industry leaders and Microsoft partners to talk about the big ideas shaping business and technology today. In today's episode, we speak with Jen Seeger, Director of Business Strategy at Microsoft, about how to use personal branding and social selling to help drive business growth. Hey, Jen. Hi. We're excited to have you here today. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it. So tell me a little bit about your experience. You've been with Microsoft nine years. That's right. Um, how did you get started in technology? Yeah, so I when I joined Microsoft about nine years ago, I started working with ISV partners. Um, spent about four and a half years um, really helping partners to, to build their business as ISVs. Um, I did a lot of work on channel development, you know, helping them understand how to go to market, those kinds of things. And then um, about four and a half years ago, I joined the Worldwide Partner Organization, or One Commercial Partner, um, which is now it's what it's called. And in that role, I was actually responsible for the cloud program programs at Microsoft um, when they were in incubation. Um, so I spent many years just, you know, kind of understanding what it takes for a partner to build their business, how to grow profitably. Um, and, you know, that is really where I started working on, you know, social selling and thought leadership as a part of my role. Jen is responsible for some incredible partner profitability work and some of the modern partner ebook series that we have on the portal and the cloud practice development playbook. So she really understands the minds of our partners and their customers. And I think something you got really interested in was social selling because this is the social selling is kind of the way to reach customers, right? Because most of the buying decision at this point, 60, 70% is made before there's even any conversation. Right. Um, and so I'm curious what about social selling is really about building your personal brand first. That's right. Yeah. I, I think um, it's important for people to think about, um, you know, what is the, the, the voice or the, the image that you want to portray to the world, um, both individually as, it, you know, people who work for companies and then also for your company. Um, and so that's really for, that was really the starting point for me. Um, and I think I shared with you a little bit about kind of my own journey. Um, I could go into some detail if you yeah. like. Yeah, so um, probably about three and a half or so years ago, um, there was a new role that opened up um, to lead partner profitability strategy. And my um, my corporate vice president at the time came to me and he said, look, Jen, I think this is a great opportunity for you to take a new role and do something a little different than what you've been doing. Um, and so I was excited about that um, because at the time, you know, th- this topic of partner profitability was really, you know, an important one for, for the cloud business at Microsoft and for partners. Partners were always saying, okay, I'm moving to the cloud. How do I make money? And so it was really incumbent on me to um, come up with the story for Microsoft about that. So, um, so in this conversation with, with my manager, um, he kind of said, well, you know, I think go out there, do some presentations, tweet, you know, get out right, there. Right. And so it was one of those things as a, as a career marketer, I spent many years in the um, software industry prior to coming to Microsoft. And, you know, I, I liked, you know, I was interested in social and I had done it in, in previous roles, even at Microsoft. Um, but this was really going to be a main part of my role. And so I needed to kind of rise to the challenge. Now, yeah. I'm going to tell you, I'm a pretty introverted person. And so to think, okay, I'm going to go out there, what am I going to talk about? Like, <laughs> yeah. what do, does anyone care what I'm discussing here? Right. Um, so the starting point was really to just think about what is that brand that I want to have? Um, What do I want to be about? What do I uniquely bring to the table that I can share with the world? Um, And so uh, what I started to do was just think about, um, you know, what are some of my skills and what are some of the experiences I've had as a marketer in the technology space? Um, I I then um, started to think about what is this social presence going to look like? Um, And for me, uh, you know, I found that I can't be on too many channels. I need to kind of focus on a few. Right. And so I ended up focusing on LinkedIn and Twitter as the, the primary places where I would share my messages. Of course, we have some videos and things through YouTube and other channels. Um, but those were my two primary ones that I was leading. Um, and then what I did is I also um, worked closely um, with, with, honestly, with your team in building out a blog and kind of sharing insights through, through that form as well. Um, so I kind of picked my channels. Um, and then I, I did a lot of listening. Um, social listening, that's a really important thing to do is not just start engaging and, you know, throwing information out there, but listening to what was top of mind for people. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, That ended up transpiring into doing a lot of research 
Uh, we I partnered with IDC on a number of studies over the time that I um, I worked on partner profitability, um, really to understand, you know, on a worldwide basis, um, what are the what's interesting to partners? What do they wonder about? What are they doing? Um, spent a lot of time, you know, one to one with some of our top performing partners, gathering insights. And so, what I was finding as I was doing all of this was I was coming up with lots and lots of content that I could share um, through the different channels. And how do you start to? How did you differentiate? building your personal brand, making people understand Jen Seeger from the business side that this is Microsoft? Right. Yeah, that's that's a good question. So I think, you know, certainly as a Microsoft employee, I want to make sure that I'm telling the Microsoft story through right. through the work that I do. But I also try to bring authenticity to that from my own unique experiences. So an example I'll give you of that one is last year at the, the um, Microsoft Inspire conference, yeah. I um, was on stage in, in a general session and I told a story about um, my son and competition and, and how that's so important in this space is, you know, competition is heating up. Now, instead of just talking about competition and throwing numbers out there, I told a personal story about my son. Um, you know, if anyone knows me personally, you know, I, I, I'm very family focused and I like to tell stories um, that um, make things real. Mm -hmm. And so that's one way. Um, you know, I think there's, there's sort of uh, rules of thumb out there in terms of um, how many times you should share about, you know, personal things or, um, you know, company articles and company kind of information versus, uh, you know, broader sort of trends. I think I've heard about the 411 rule. You mm -hmm. know, you can share sort of four interesting pieces of information about, you know, industry trends, might be digital transformation or technology or whatever, to one sort of product or company-specific update. Um, and then you have to throw in that last one is um, more a personal thing. You know, it could be you love cats or you love right. baseball or, you yeah. know, you're a fan of the Seahawks and you want to talk about that. Um, so trying to, like, balance that out I think is something that's important because at the end of the day we're all people and you want to be interesting um, to the world. Yeah. You talked about storytelling. Mm -hmm. Storytelling as a, a key way to connect with people. Um, what else or did you get any help in trying to build your brand, coaching or what are some other things that you did to build your personal brand? Absolutely. So um, I uh, sought out mentors um, within the company um, and outside of the company who I thought were good storytellers. Um, I got coaching from them, one-to-one -one sort of um, training on how to tell a good story. I mean, there's a real art to telling good stories, I think. Um, it's, some, it's something I'm on a journey. I'm always learning how to tell right. good stories. Um, but I think that if you really want to grab somebody's attention and you want to bring them into your presentation, a great way to do that is to tell a story at the very beginning. And that's really what I did in, at, at, the, at the conference this last year. I, I walked on stage and I started with a story. And it, it felt awkward. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I practiced it. Um, yeah. But it felt awkward to just jump right in. Um, but that's actually a very effective strategy to get people away from their phones or their computers and get them to pay attention to what you have to say. That's super helpful. When you go into these presentations, you kind of start with a story. Do you use any other structures in helping tell your um, to helping tell your kind of presentations, I would imagine a yeah. lot of our partners are they're in front of people. They're yeah. doing this and trying to build their brand and connect on a business side. Mm -hmm. Is there some secret sauce that you think about? Yeah. I mean, a lot of times I like to share some interesting data points, things yeah. that might not be things that they know about, yeah. um, you know, something compelling to kind of, I want to say, put fear in their hearts, but sort of say, look, yeah. this is, you know, a lot of times I would share insights around, you know, the cloud opportunity right. and how big that was or where customers are lo looking to buy and whether and, and kind of get their attention and make them think, gosh, am I doing the right things or am I missing the boat with my strategy? So I try to I try to use data to kind of draw people in as well. Now that can, you can't, you don't want to take that too far, right? Because right. just throwing out numbers, numbers all the time, it's not very anything. interesting. Right. But if you can put some really, you know, salient points in there to get their attention and make them realize that, you know, maybe they should be listening. Um, I think it's a good strategy. Yeah. So how do you actually turn the brand into a way to make money? and to actually get customers. Can you talk a little bit about truly social selling? Yeah. So I think um, 
there's a, there's a lot of different um, ways to do this. I think from a social selling perspective, there's a couple of key principles. I think one is that you you need to engage in social listening and paying attention to what's happening. So for example, let's say you have a LinkedIn network. Mm-hmm. Instead of just going out to LinkedIn and sharing lots of content, right? Um, you will want to pay attention to what other people are posting. So take a look at, you know, every there's lots of moments that happen in a day that would give you an opportunity to reach out. Those could be things like someone's birthday, right. um, someone changed jobs, um, someone is um, posted an article about digital transformation, you know, maybe one of your customers. Those are all moments and opportunities for you to engage. And I think people feel good on the, when people reach out and comment on their articles or comment on their posts or say, hey, you know, um, you, I've noticed that you changed jobs. I'm so excited for you and, and this new opportunity. I think you're going to do great. Those yeah. kinds of connections, you know, connect, you connect with people on a personal level in those cases. So I think um, part of it is engaging that social listening piece. Other, and then as you start to build those relationships, it could mean that you're sharing really relevant content with people. Mm-hmm. So maybe they've posted this article on digital transformation and you have some really great information about how your solution can address some of the challenges that they're talking about in their yeah. article. It's a great opportunity to kind of share some additional information with them. Mm-hmm. Now, that is a difference. I mean, I think, um, you know, I was at a presentation earlier this week by uh, Jill Rowley, who's a, a, you know, sort of a social selling strategist. And she talked about this mindset change that needs to happen between selling and helping. So, yeah. so sellers need to think of themselves as helping um, their customers. And I think that that was a really great way of thinking about this because if you're helping your customers they're not being they're not feeling like they're being sold to right so that's just those are just a couple of examples i think of to answer your question um yeah as you're talking about this i was thinking about linkedin i was thinking about sales navigator and mm-hmm. as that's a great tool to do social Absolutely. selling um and what you're also talking about is that this takes thought Yes, it takes a lot of time and effort, right? So it's not – you might have a lead and yeah. um, instead of just calling up right. and dialing on that lead if you're in a sales position, you could be leveraging social – or sorry, sales navigator to understand – um, who that person is and to understand the people that they know and how you might be connected to that person, potentially leverage someone within your network to get you a connection into that person who happens to be a lead. Right, um, get that an introduction he, really that's right. organically. That's right. that's right. Or you could be going out to, let's say, Twitter, and you could find out that that person posts a lot of pictures of cats. And so they're clearly, like, really into cats. So instead of maybe you – You know, you bring it cats up in the conversation and you try, like when you do connect with them, try to form that personal um, connection with people. So there's a lot of tools to do this. And I think um, we see that, you know, sellers who are leveraging um, social selling are much more effective. Um, They're much, uh, much better at actually closing deals and, you know, um, filling their pipeline. Um, They're always filling their pipeline because remember all those moments in LinkedIn, all those times when you're connecting with people could be potential opportunities down the line that you could be fostering. Right. I mean, what about Facebook and blogging? I mean, Twitter, you use, Mm -hmm. you know, you use Twitter and LinkedIn. And I I agree, I think, for social selling and that business standpoint, LinkedIn and Twitter are really Mm -hmm. great. Do you think there's a time and place for Facebook? And what about blogging? I mean, I think Facebook... I personally don't use it for business. It's yeah. more my sort of friends network where I share pictures and probably too many videos of my son <laughs> playing basketball, to be honest. But right. um, but I will say it's a source of information. So as a yeah. seller, um, just because you're not going to connect with your customer on Facebook doesn't mean that you can't take a look at their Facebook profile. Um, and just it's, it's an information gathering exercise. Yeah. Um, and there are Facebook groups, obviously, that are very business oriented. And so I think at the end, if, if you're thinking about this from a business perspective, um, you know, the general rule of thumb, I think, is you, you go where your customers are. So your customers are on Facebook. Right. I mean, we do work as, you know, Microsoft on Facebook all right. the time because our customers are living in there, Facebook, right. right? Microsoft Partner Network's on Facebook because right. we know they're there. So I think from a company perspective yeah. – 
you know, if your demographic graphic is in that area, it would behoove you to kind of take a look at that as a channel. Um, and then, but more on a personal level, um, I'm not seeing a lot of, at least in business to business, a lot of direct uses for Facebook on a more personal one-to-one basis. Right, right. And then you, you, you blog with us, mm-hmm. of course. Yes. So, you, so blogging is an important mechanism. Yes. To kind of build your brand. Absolutely. Do you have any tips and tricks for for those that haven't started blogging or maybe want to start? Yeah. So that's a great question. I get that a lot from partners. They'll say, well, what am I going to talk about? <laughs> you know, yeah. How do I get out there? <laughs> right. And, right. you know, that's, again, it comes down to unique experiences and things that you bring to the table. Um, I think um, one strategy that has worked really well for a lot of partners is actually to go out and get a lot of people, individuals within their company blogging. So they have a lot of, a lot of addition, you know, new content to put out all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen in certain cases, they'll even put an incentive in place, say, Hey, you know, if you have your, um, maybe it's your developers or it could be your engineers and they've just come off of a really exciting project they did with a customer, who better than to write about how they leverage technology? It's a fantastic idea, right? So I've even seen them pay them a hundred dollars or they'll do, you know, pizza parties for their team to kind of motivate people to, right. um, to talk. Um, I think, you know, customer interactions or, you know, you can talk about industry trends, you can talk about how you meet the needs of line of business decision makers. So just think, you know, I I suggest as a starting point, just brainstorm, you know, what are all the different kind of potential topics um, that we could talk about? What do we want to be known for both as a business? And then how do we want to establish our own employees as thought leaders? And they may all come to the table with a very different perspective. I mean, you were having me blog as a partner profitability expert. Um, I would love, you know, we bring in guest bloggers all the time that are partners right. bringing their perspectives to the table. Others, you know, Gabriella would have a very different perspective. Um, so I think it's just leveraging everyone's strengths and thinking about what they, what could they be, um, sharing. That's super helpful. Um, what do you think are some obstacles or don't some no, don't do this if you're going to start being on LinkedIn or Twitter and start building your presence? Mm -hmm. I think one thing that, um, a lot of people do mistakenly is they only share information about their own company or their own, you know, details of their product. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that it's not very interesting, right? It doesn't capture people's attention. So it's important to, um, you know, share information that's topical for everyone else. I talked about the 411 rule earlier. That's important to think about. And, you know, you don't have to feel like you have to build all the content, right? Because, um, you know, we will, you know, retweet articles and content from IDC or Gartner or other, you know, uh, firms. Well, um, you can reshare that kind of information and you're also showing value yeah. by doing that. Yeah. Um, so I think that it's it's not feeling like you have to be the one creating and pushing all of the content. And you know, it's it's funny because Jen and I were talking about our social selling index on Sales Navigator, yes. <laughs> which is the LinkedIn product to help with social selling and really find leads. And the social selling index is really an indicator of how well you are connecting with others. And it's based Sorry. off of your likes, how many shares you have, how much you're liking other people, commenting on other people. That's right. So it really is a function so much of how you're interacting with others more in most cases actually than what you're just putting out there from, right. from yourself. So that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. So if I was, the partner's going to walk away today. What, what is the best advice you can give them in terms of leveraging their personal ba- brand mm-hmm. and doing social selling, using social media? Yeah. I think as a starting point, it's figuring out what is that brand that you want to portray to the world. Um, sit down, think about that, then kind of formulate a plan. Think about what are the channels that I'm going to be present in. And don't pick too many yeah. because it's hard to spread yourself really thin. I think that's as a marketing organization, as an individual who is sharing content, kind of uh, think about strategically where are your customers and then your your decisions about where you want to be present should follow that, right? Um, the next step is to, to build your network. So before any meeting, uh, that you have with somebody, connect on them with link or connect on LinkedIn prior to your meeting. Not after. I, I mean, after that. meeting, fine. If you forget, great. But right. before your meeting, take the time to read through their profile and understand 
something about that person. Yeah. Where did they graduate? Maybe you graduated from the same college. Um, maybe um, you worked at, a, at the same company and you have some of the same um, people in your networks. Having that information and having a little bit of personal sort of insight when you come into a conversation is huge. So making sure you're always being mindful of building that network of people. Um, and don't be afraid to ask people for introductions. I mean, that's part of the purpose of LinkedIn is to figure out how you're connected with everybody in the right. world, right? Yeah. Um, I, I spend time as well looking for thought leaders in the industry. Um, you know, who do I want to connect with? Who do I want to know and follow? Because, you know, I follow a lot of social selling strategists, a lot of, you know, marketing organizations. Um, I follow a ton of partners. I, I, I have lots and lots of connections out there on LinkedIn. That's just lots of new content that you're always kind of gathering and, and you're learning all the time from your network. Yeah. Um, so that's really important. I think I think um, then it's 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 taking the time to build and share content and be really dedicated to it. Um, you know, take time each week. For me, when I was getting started with all of this, I I set thirty minutes on my calendar and I said that is my social you know, hour or 30 minutes every day. And, and that got me into, um, just the practice of doing it every day. And so now I don't have a 30 minute calendar, you know, calendar notice every single day to remind me to jump onto Twitter and LinkedIn. I'm just doing it between meetings or, you know, I, I checked my Twitter before I walked over here this morning to do the podcast. I mean, um, so always kind of going out there. And I think the other, the next thing would be making sure that you're really, um, engaging with people. So it's not just about, again, sharing your content, but, you know, coming back to them and, and liking their, their things, retweeting, um, giving back a little bit. And when you can, making connections within your network, I think is really important as well. Even if you don't get something out of that situation, yeah. um, that goes a long way, I think, in the future. People right. will, will be willing to do you a favor, I think, if you do that. Absolutely. Um, and then finally, you know, measurement. I, um, I spend a fair amount of time measuring my success. Um, you mentioned the social selling index, and mm-hmm. we were a little competition that we're going to continue <laughs> from here. Um, friendly competition, of course. Yes. Um, but, you know, it's it's fun to kind of do that. Um, I, I look at my analytics on Twitter. There's a lot of, like, really good data in there about who's following me, how many new followers I have, what kinds of content is interesting. So that's actually one of the most important things is when I share something um, – what it, what what kind of content gets retweeted the most? Right, um, it's, it's a good really, indicator. It's a good indicator of what your your audience wants to hear about yeah. and and, and um, what they respond to. So I spend a lot of time looking at that kind of analytics. Um, spending a little bit of extra time sometimes when you do a tweet to just find a picture that might grab somebody's attention. Um, that's that's kind of a, a nice best practice in getting, you know, more um, tweets or retweets rather and um, likes and that kind of thing. Um, so, so measuring your results and refining your approach, I think, is is an important um, kind of last step that's just an ongoing thing. Right. And it's always changing. It it's is al- always changing. Always changing. And you just got to keep going with it, watch other people and stay up to date. That's right. That's right. Um, well, thank you, Jen. Yeah, this sure. Awesome. No, thank you for having me. I Thanks for coming it. in. Thanks for listening today and check out the podcast description for show notes. Be sure to subscribe and keep in touch with us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter at MS Partner.